Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. If you just kind of feel stuck in life, maybe you have chronic pain, going through some challenges, there's something that can help and support you called myofascial release. Now, imagine getting that therapeutic treatment in a retreat custom designed for you. Yes, I said retreat. Who doesn't want to go away? Sort of like a vacation. We're going to talk to the two women that facilitate that and learn all about myofascial release. They are Patty and Julie, and they join us on the program today. Hey, guys, how you doing? Great. How are you? Great. Thank you. Very well. You're in Michigan, Upper Peninsula. I always get the peninsulas confused. Yeah, uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's the hand. Gotcha. We're right here. <laughs> We're a quarter mile paddle from Lake Superior. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, what, a, what a beautiful area to do a retreat. It mm. is. We actually just really say we are at the edge of the earth and our space is in a red pine forest on a river that basically you can get right into your kayak and kayak out to Lake Superior. And you have about a five mile beach that pretty much is all your own. You're, you're immersed with nature, with the bald eagles, the sandhill cranes. The black bears. The, yeah, the snapping turtles. They just laid their eggs, but it's all in beauty. Mm. It's amazing here. I believe the universe has also put you both before me because my Zen thing is kayaking and mm. I do not carve enough time out for it. And it's finally getting warmer here in the New York area. I'm in a suburb and I got to go. So there's another, it's a second reminder today, <laughs> roundabout way of reminding me. Uh, yeah, it's great to kayak here and I love the wildlife. I, I usually go in salt water too. Um, but it's nothing like what you described. So we're going to get to the retreats in a moment, but let's talk about myofascial release, what it is and, and what it helps people with. Well, myofascial release is a type of body work and it's different from massage where you're just, it's a routine that you're working the whole body. Um, so with myofascial release, we see, we look at your body before we get you on the table and see where you are getting pulled out of neutral and what gravity is doing to your whole system. And then that gives us a starting point to start, um, working with your body and opening it up, whether it's attraction or going right into the restrictions that are pulling you out of neutral. So Really, we're getting to um, the core of what's going on. We'll go layer by layer with the um, of the fascia, and the fascia itself is um, it's a type of connective tissue, and it runs from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head uninterrupted. It's it's like a spider web, and so when you're born. It's this beautifully laid out spider web because you're, you're born without traumas and um, restrictions. But over time, they start to pull your body into different directions and that causes pain. And it puts pressure on your organs, your nervous system. And so what we try to do is really just open up the whole body. So when people come in and they have just a knee issue... Um, traditional uh, therapies will just work on the knee or on the symptoms, but we work on the whole body because the whole body is affected. This network that we're talking about, does it get, and, and there's another type of therapy, I think, or maybe I'm thinking of myofascial release, but when you have a, a surgery, minor, doesn't matter, and underneath your skin, that it just creates a you know more web work, if you will, that needs to be worked out. Is that similar to what we're talking about? Well, it, after, in a sense, after you have a, a surgery, your body is really amazing. And so it's going to protect you in a sense. And so we, we kind of describe it a bit like it's sort of like a used car part after a surgery. And so it's trying to protect it and hold it in place. And so it can be connect connective tissue but it also is scar tissue. 
in there. And so sometimes that scar tissue, if it is not worked on, it can become really bogged down for you and then start causing more and more restrictions in the body. So the fascia becomes affected by that scar tissue. It is affected by the surgery in and of itself, which is just a trauma to your body. And so its natural reaction is going to be to protect you. Um, and so the scar tissue will impact the fascia in your body which in a sense, your fascia covers all your muscles, your bones, your organs at three different levels within your system. And so any type of a surgery, any type of a fall, any type of trauma, whether it be emotional or physical, your body is always taking you into a protective state. And so the fascia will tighten down to protect you. Mm. And our goal is in a sense that after a trauma has happened, we have difficulty releasing that energy from our system. And so when we can go in and release the fascia, it's releasing that hold on your organs, on your nerves, on your bones and muscles. Um, and so it's really important after a surgery, surgery, but really we recommend it to be preventative um, and at times we can help people not have to have a surgery. Um, but it's also just great treatment, even for someone who is healthy and has no issues. So we're, we're talking for this moment more about the physical aspect. Let's focus on the emotional. Am I understanding that when you go through an emotional trauma, whether it's in your far past or even last year, whatever it might be, that that also does something to the fascia and tightens it up and has to be worked out? It does. I I would say for a perfect example, if you see somebody um, who closes themselves off, you know, their shoulders are really rounded forward, their head is tucked in a sense, quite a few times that is coming from a trauma in some cases, even like a sexual assault trauma, they're trying to protect themselves. Um, we, in a sense, are the only animal that exposes our underside, so it makes us very vulnerable. And this is their way of closing and protecting. And if you hold yourself in that position constantly, you move that way. And so you start compensating through your movements, which will eventually lead to pain and injury. Wow. So those emotional holds, in a sense, we always say behind every fa fascial restriction is an emotion, whether it's a happy, sad, or um, pain emotion. Mm -hmm. mm. So as we, as we work with people and they're on the table, we might be opening this space up and they're not consciously thinking of this trauma from 20 or 30 years ago or a few years ago. But a lot of times they'll start, memories will start coming up as we start releasing this area. And the key is for them to just allow themselves to continue feeling that and, and feel the emotions through to, to allow the tissue to release and to clear that trauma. Wow. What I've learned in my journey in even the last six months is that the things we go through, whether it's daily stress, whether it's a trauma, again, in your past, childhood, whatever, that it goes down to the cellular level. I don't think any of us realize that you know, you went through a you know a tough time, whatever it might be, and it's not just up here. And it didn't, you know, you know, a lot of that that we know manifests itself. Let's say you go through stress, you gave yourself an ulcer, you know where it came from, and and yeah. you work to eradicate it, um, but it's still in your cells, like like everywhere. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of taken over you, uh, which is kind of scary when you think about what's going on in our lives and what we deal with. Uh, so makes perfect sense that we need to release this stuff, get it out of our bodies. And this, am I understanding that this is the way to do it? Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, I think the biggest difference between the way that we work through trauma versus maybe just talk therapy 
we can talk ourselves out of a paper bag, you know, and say whatever it is we want to make ourselves look good, but our body never lies. Right. And it, it will bring up those emotions or those traumas within us. And when mm -hmm. your body is ready to, and it feels safe, it will start releasing those emotions. And at times I had a particular client who I was working through his chest area and all of a sudden he was re-experiencing a time when he was at a restaurant and was choking on food and was scared to death. And for about 10 minutes, he was going through that process to allow his body to release that hold and protection on him. And it really is in a sense of completing the story for his body, let alone his, his mind that he did not die while choking. Wow. And it was just amazing how his body freed himself and his ability to move his shoulders and his arms um, was amazing for him. And it's really that piece of getting the brain to let go of protecting you from a scenario it no longer needs to. And, you know, we're all brought up or at least our generation of you know keep your emotions in check don't release them and it's different than animals who after they've had a scare or a trauma they run they shake they release the energy and yeah. go on and if we think about it you know I'm at 57 i've got a lot of emotion within me that if i don't release it it it's going to start controlling me physically, emotionally, and mentally. It, like they say, it, it'll always catch up with you, no matter what. And yes, to your point, okay. look at a dog. When a dog goes through something, let's say you know, they were frightened, or even I watched my dog come from outside to inside. What does your dog do? Shakes. And initially, okay. I would think, well, he's, you know, his fur is out of place, so he's, you know, it was windy out, so he's... <laughs> no, no, he's he's actually shaking the energy from the outside off so he can receive the energy from the inside. Almost like whoop, reset button, reset button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing as we get older that we're able to even function <laughs> like, right. with, with everything that's you know going on and accumulating in our bodies in terms of uh, all the traumas, the stress and everything that's mm -hmm. a, bubbling under, if you will. Um you, you do these retreats, and obviously it's it's myofascial release during the retreats. What else goes on? What else goes on? Well, you know, we, we, we offer three, five, and 10-day um, retreats. And really, and we, we'll, uh, we'll talk to people before they decide, and we'll help them decide which is appropriate for them, the three, five, or 10 and in a 10-day retreat, that's our true game changer for people that have been in chronic pain, trying to prevent surgeries, um, or kind of in, in uh, uh, yeah, or the life, or, or going through life transitions. And um, I think what we offer here um, that's so unique is the um, nature immersion, first of all. Because we're trying to um, have them come back to a, a simple life and remove them from their day-to-day -day work, their day-to-day, -day, um, you know, home life. So they get to stay in our geodesic dome that is, is located in the forest. And it is very luxurious. And so they feel safe. They feel um, immersed in nature. They have the eagles in the trees. Um, but th we offer um, all-inclusive where we, we cook for them and everything is taken care of, but they come in for four hours a day minimum when they're here, four to five hours a day for treatment. Um, we, we gather first and we kind of do um, a wisdom council. Um, it's just we... We do a, a practice called stringing the beads in the morning where we get to hear from them and what their experience has been 
from the day before and what they're learning, what their ahas are. So we really give them an opportunity to speak and be heard. Um, we guide them through some somatic training um, and functional training. So not only are we doing the myofascial release, but we also have a, a, a barn gym that we try to work with them um, and help them see their patterns of movement um, with standing, postural standing, walking. Um, we go on hikes with them. We videotape their uh, their gait and um, and their habits, and and then we show mm. them what we see. And most of wow. the time, they're so surprised with. Um, they don't know their, their normal has been, um, a, a group of patterns that have been not productive for their, um, their pain. Wow. Uh, the gate that you, uh, identify in somebody, um, uh, just looking at them using your experience with all of this, it sounds like you can tell a lot from somebody. It it was the difference, I think, of when we created our intensive versus other myofascial therapists who do intensives um, or treatments. We've created what we call our body wisdom approach, and it's it's four elements to it. It's remember, release, retrain, and rebuild. And the remember part is our piece of without awareness, there is no choice. And you'd really be amazed of how many people are unaware of how they move through life, not only physically, but emotionally. And so while they're here with us, we're able to see their patterns, be able to mirror them back for them. But also without that awareness, they don't know how to make change in their life. So the release portion is the myofascial piece of it in that we're going to release the areas that have become restricted or overused due to compensations within their bodies. And then we retrain the body so it learns how to function and move properly. And then you are taught on how to rebuild it, on how to work out, how to exercise properly. Um, we've really found from just our experience as therapists only giving treatments to people that they would come once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, and it would be like starting over. And we really have to break their patterns. And the only way to do that is kind of to just keep addressing it day after day after day. And each client receives a toolbox that we call it um, with specific exercises in it. Um, and it, each one is different for each person. Um, we really customize the intensive and the client is the only person here. We don't do group retreats. You get our 100% undivided attention. Um, and it's, it's just really important of the breaking patterns because if you don't, your body will always revert back to what it knows. And that's the path of least resistance. And right. we're trying to create a new path. Well, the body, the mind is always looking for familiarity. So it's going back to stuff it knows. Um, I want to get to, before we ever run out of time here, how to uh, sign up for the retreats and what that looks like. But first, can you tell me your myofascial journey, how you got involved in all of this? Patty? Mm hmm Wow. <laughs> well, I got involved in my fascia release. It was a career change for me. Um, I was on a sabbatical and I met Julie and she introduced me to the work. Um, and it was interesting. I was going home to visit my dad who had just had a surgery and I asked her if she could show me just a few things that maybe I could do with him when I went to visit. And so when I got home, my parents were there and I did some work with my dad and with my stepmom. And they both said, well, why don't you do this? You know, you're pretty good at it. And 
it wasn't even in my thought process as this as a career in any way. Um, but it really resonated because I have a background as a personal trainer um, and I owned a boxing gym. And so I worked a lot with people in this area to a degree. And then I've gone on and gotten certifications in biomechanics. And that's been a really big piece wow. for our intensives. But it was really um, being introduced to the work through Julie. Wow. And Julie, how about you? Wow. Um, so I, I went to physical therapy assisting school and um, I was planning on going back to PT school um, when it came to my area back in the early 90s. And so what I decided instead of, you know, putting that extra $50,000 towards PT school um, that I would look into myofascial release and I fell in love with, with the work. And so I invested that money into continuing education and I trained with John Barnes, um, and took every single one of his classes, probably three times. I was on the fast track because I was so excited about the changes that I was seeing with my patients with just a few techniques. Um, so I, I, from there, I, I worked a little bit at Therapy on the Rocks. That's John Barnes's uh, clinic in Sedona and kind of got to see the um, intensive, how the intensives worked. And I loved it. And so there's so many people out there and there are, there's, this is needed. Intensives mm -hmm. are needed across the country. Many more therapists need to be doing this work. <laughs> and, and we need to spread the awareness because people just aren't yeah. aware of it. Uh, traditional medicine doctors aren't really talking about it. Uh, the lymphatic system alone, there's so, such a, an absence of information. I know a woman that created a book about the lymphatic system digression here, mm -hmm. but this is how <laughs> this stuff is just not talked about. She couldn't find pictures. The pictures in her book go back to the 1800s yeah. and the 1700s where they documented things so much better. But anyway, uh, just about out of time here. How does somebody find out more about these retreats and just more about you guys in general? Um, we have a website and it's the myofascial experience.com. Um, they can look at the different options. We have anywhere from three to five days, but we also offer a one-year journey for someone who comes for four intensives over a one-year period. And then we work with them in between their intensives. We've had several of those in the past couple of years. Um, and they can also give us a call. I mean, our number is 855-597-1042. And they can send us an email through the website. And we're happy to do a Zoom call with everybody and let them get to know us. And, and we'll talk to them and see if they're, you know, they're ready for the, this intensive. And we also um, have a traveling um, part of our business where we travel to you. So we're leaving tomorrow morning for 10 days to go to Iowa to work with Three generations. Wow, we're very excited about. So we travel around the country. You are if the people can't come to us. You are the myofascial go tos. <laughs> you really are. Uh, we love it. Yeah. We love what we do. Oh. Yeah, it's a labor of love. We love our work and we love helping people move through their pain and go through the process. For sure, we're all dealing with it. We just don't realize it. <laughs> and thank you for bringing it to light today, Patty and Julie, and, and joining us and keep up the great work. Again, if somebody wants to even ask questions, you guys are available. So go to the website. It's the myofascial experience.com. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We'll be right back. Okay. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. 
Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying totally just shorter. As in I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter better way to say jealous. As in Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're um rad just the same. To learn more, visit adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the US Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council.